Hey guys, what's up? I'm going to be working from home today. It's colder out in New York. And in this vlog, I want to talk about this one quote I read. And it's called, it's from, I believe, Do It, the book. Um, I'll link to it in the description down below. But the quote is that your purpose is what you've been doing all along and that you'll continue to do until the day you die. So what does that mean exactly? Something that you've been doing all along that you've been passionate about, something that you've been trying to give the world or maybe even just a thought process that you continue to revert back to all the time. I think that's what the quote means. And for me, just to give you a little bit of background here, I first got into business when I was a sophomore in college. I really just never saw myself as getting into that ever before. Like, I, I had no interest in business whatsoever up until that point. It was only when I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which uh, if you've been in, are interested in business, you might have read that also. I'll link to that as well. But it talks about how business is really one of the best ways to set yourself out from this whole trap in society of really making sure that you have your own income stream, that you're not beholden to an employer. And you don't necessarily have to be a business owner, but just understanding business has a lot of value with it. So that's really what got me into business and just like interested in the first place. And that's become a passion over time. That's become something that, you know, uh, I really uh, love. That's something that I've, I've definitely gone a long ways in. Um, since then, I've started a bunch of different companies. Lots of them have failed. Uh, I've started successful websites. I've started not so successful websites. So I've learned a lot in that medium. But that being said, I had a lot of other interests when I was a kid. So like I was, when I was very, looking way back, I was interested in becoming an FBI agent. And I thought it would be cool. I thought it'd be a little bit of a glamorous job. I thought it sort of was suited to my personality just because I'm naturally curious about other people. And I always, I did want to like look cool and stuff. But I thought I was going to go into the FBI pretty much up until college. I actually bought a book on how to get into the FBI, started doing a lot of the exercise regimens to make sure that my I was, I was fit enough, uh, and just going through the list of the different criteria, how to apply, when you can apply, the different programs, all that kind of stuff. So I pretty much until my sophomore year of college thought I was going to go into the FBI later down the road. But aside from that, I also thought I was going to be an engineer at one point when I was younger, just because I really loved the idea of creating new technology, the, the way that it can impact our lives, the way that we can just form it and it will be like a mini person. Like you can create this computer program or you can create this machine and it has a, its own a little bit of intelligence uh, and it can execute commands, it can do things in the world. That was just so cool to me. And that was very heavily influenced. Actually, I should admit, Everything I've done in my life has been heavily influenced by the movies, by our culture, by things I was exposed to, like books. I think actually when I uh, got into engineering, I was reading this book called Prey, which is all about nanotechnology, which was by Michael Crichton. So just looking through my life, uh, I, a lot of the things that I've done have been influenced by the, the types of books I've read and the movies I've seen and things that I thought would be cool. I remember that actually uh, Top Gun, that movie, I remember was one of the, I, I have to look up the statistic, but it, it sold so many people on going into the Air Force or going into the military. It was probably the best ad campaign they ever had. And also Tom Cruise's glasses were like super sold out. They made a ton of money because everyone wanted to be like him and wanted to go into the Air Force or wanted to buy the glasses that he had in the movie. So we are very much impacted by the things in our society, uh, particularly the cultural things or the entertainment that we consume. The, the other thing I wanted to be when I was younger, when I was in high school, I thought I was gonna go into computer programming. And the reason there was I was just fascinated with computers. I didn't understand them at all. I got into, my first thing I did, I think most people in computer programming get into it because they're interested in gaming. Uh, I was interested in gaming. I did a few different games with a software called Multimedia Fusion. Uh, I learned that, then started to get more into gaming and like how to develop games. 
And then that's when I got into actual computer programming. I first started with uh, C++, which was not a good idea. Uh, it was, it's one of the harder languages, and I started with uh, BASIC, and I went to this summer camp for three years, I believe. Um, so I started with those, I sucked at it, I thought I was not in any way geared towards this, but I kept reading, I kept learning, and then the next year I actually picked it up much more easily. I started to understand C++, uh, I started to understand Visual BASIC, got more into the next year into Java, and then web programming like HTML, CSS. I never really got into the uh, dynamic websites like database, PHP, uh, MySQL stuff when I was younger. I didn't get into that until college and really understanding how that works. But uh, so for a long time, I thought I was gonna be a computer programmer. And the one thing, the reason it turned me off that I didn't w decide to go down that route was in my junior year of high school, I ended up having a horrible, a horrible uh, computer science teacher that I really did not get on with, that I really did not like very much. I didn't like her teaching style. And I remember very clearly, one of the things she said when she entered the room the first time was, if you're not good at math, or to this effect, you're probably not gonna do very well in this class. And up until that point, I had never been very good at math. I never had a reason to want to know calculus or be very good at uh, like geometry. I actually, I really did like algebra. But up until that moment in class, I was like, uh, okay, like I'm not good at math. <laughs> That's not a good sign. But I should have just trusted myself that I had already done well in computer science. But that kind of, to me, turned her off initially. And then over time, I just didn't really like this teacher. And I realized that at any point if in my career I was to get a boss like that, that I would not be very happy in the computer programming field. I don't want to be just told what to do. I don't want to be under this person that I don't like. And it sort of got me thinking about other ways that I could, other careers that I could go into. So that led me, I was always very, very interested in writing and uh, reading. And actually, that's something that's spanned my entire life. I've always been into reading. I've always been interested in writing. I've always kind of looked up to authors in the past. And the reason I think is because that's the best way that I, up until recently, have expressed myself. I've been, uh, put my thoughts into writing form. I'll put my revelations into writing form. I had a journal in high school that I completely filled up, like over 300 pages. Uh, I would write short stories. Uh, short novels. I wrote one novel that sucked in high school and uh, poetry, all that kind of stuff. To me, it was the best way to express myself. So uh, that being said, I, I got really into thinking that I might be interested in the writing field, taking lots of creative writing classes in the summer, and also taking psychology just because that was naturally interested to me. And this is a very short way of saying that I think when you're younger, you should try out as many things as possible. That you shouldn't just try to hone in and craft this vision like I'm going to be a doctor so I need to do this, 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 and this. You should be testing out so many different types of activities. You should be taking lots of different classes. You should just be exposing yourself to as many cool activities as possible. But that, that being said, I, I think that throughout all of this, and this is the recurring theme that I, I personally have found in my life thus far, is the one thing that I've always been doing. And the quote is that your purpose is what you've always been doing all along and that you will continue to do until the day you die or until the day that you pass away. Or um, for, for some of you out there, maybe the day that you're reincarnated. But for me, the one thing I've been doing all the time, no matter what, um, no matter what interests I've had, no matter who my friends have been, has been, one, mastering new things in my personal development space. Um, so like learning new subjects, learning how to improve certain areas of my life, whether that's fitness, business, uh, or now more of my social skills. That's one thing that has been continuous for me. I've always been interested in that. And the other thing has been, I've always wanted to share what I've learned and in some way give people the same results that I have experienced. 
so some of my friends might be able to back me up on this, but when I was in high school, I got really, really into uh, weightlifting, into doing cardio, into learning how to not manipulate, but how to improve your body. And part of that was confidence, but also part of that was I wanted to go into the FBI and I knew I needed to be very fit much more than I was at that point, even though I did a lot of sports when I was younger. So what I did was I pretty much just read lots and lots of stuff on fitness. I watched lots and lots of YouTube videos. I went out and tried a lot. It probably took me a year before I was fully comfortable in the gym, before I fully knew what I was doing and started to see some meaningful results in terms of muscle building and fat loss and all that kind of stuff. But that being said, once I did that, once I really got an understanding of how to build muscle and lose fat, I wanted to pass that knowledge on to someone else. Like I got my friends in the gym, I really was like selling this, like this is an awesome, cool thing to do. Um, you know, you'll feel awesome, you'll feel the endorphins, you'll be able to get so much more muscular. I really sold my friends on it <laughs> and I really wanted to get them in the gym too just because I knew the results I had. I wanted to share that with someone else. And that's the same thing now with this YouTube thing. Like I've seen some improvements in my social life. I've seen improvements with regards to my business. Uh, I've seen improvements in just how I manage my own emotions and I want to share those results and how I've done that with other people. In some ways I think there are some people in our society, they're like different archetypes. There are like people who are engineers and want to build things. There are people who want to design things. There are people who, um, you know, maybe don't give so much thought to that, but they want to have a great family life. And obviously this isn't all mutually exclusive. Some people enjoy lots of different types of things. There are people who want to heal other people, um, you know, prevent disease. I feel like I'm one of those people who wants to lift people up in some ways and either give them insights or let them feel things that they've never felt before and help themselves sort of with my own knowledge or what I've experienced and learned, give them the same results in their life or give them the same perspective on society. And that's a big thing for me is I've always wanted to understand society. I've always wanted to understand how society works and how to master my own life, how to understand this whole game. And no one really has laid it out at all beforehand. It's very disjointed. People who lay, like understand the fitness space might not understand the financial space. And the people who understand the financial space might not understand, oh, I don't know, how to go out and actually make a product or uh, make a business as an entrepreneur or whatever. So I've always wanted to understand society and then pass that knowledge on. Like this is an accurate represent representation of society. Like this is actually how things work in the real world. This is how dating works. This is how you actually get the companion of your dreams or this is how you manage your emotions and actually have a happy life. I've always wanted to deconstruct and understand actually how to get what you want in life and not just now what the movies say that you, you, this is how you get what you want or books say that this is actually how you do that. That's something that's been recurring in my life. I think that might be my purpose in some ways is to connect with other people and help improve their life in some way. And I already do that in small ways. Like with my blog, um, I help people achieve an objective. I help people uh, get what they want in that way. But I, I like to do it in more of a richer medium, I think. So that's kind of my purpose. So this is a long, this is a long video, but uh, I'd like to ask you, what do you think is your purpose? What have you been doing all of your life? What have you been doing regardless of circumstances? That could be what you've been passionate about or what you've been trying to do or how your mind works. What is it that you've been trying to do your entire life? or that you've been doing without even really realizing it. I think that for a lot of people, this could be maybe just making other people's lives better. A lot of people I, I come across are very giving people. And maybe their purpose then is to bring joy and happiness into other people's lives and just finding the best conduit or the best way to do that. 
So what have you been doing all your life without you haven't even been realizing it? What is it that you've been doing regardless of circumstance? And how has that continued? How has that evolved over time? Uh, I'm sure that this, this in some way traces itself back to like an early childhood memory, but I, I'm not coming up with anything. But for me, I think it started first when I had an initial you know, success or breakthrough with learning new areas and things that people weren't learning at all um, in my uh, my experience. So yeah, that, that's that's what I find right now. It'll be interesting to look back on this video in a long time, long duration, but I would love to ask that question of you. So thank you for tuning in for this vlog. I gotta get to work. Um, I'm taking a break right now, but uh, a lot of work to do today. So thank you for, for listening.